cares about traffic when you can enjoy the luxury of being in a car like this? Everybody can appreciate a beautiful car, but it's another thing actually spending your life building one. This next show is all about seven guys who spend their lives modifying and perfecting their dream machines. Welcome to Blood, Sweat and Gears, Australia's first search for the most well-rounded, modified, head-turning, road-registered car. We've searched the country to find seven guys who have a car worth talking about, and we're going to put them to the test as they go head-to-head -head in various challenges. Let's check out the contestants. I'm Andy, life's about grunt. That's why I've got 540 cubic inches of Chevy muscle. I love tough cars. Best thing is the power. Uh, it's a power trip. Can't get much tougher than uh, a big block, uh, especially in a Corvette. I've got the best car on the road because it's sex on wheels. <laughs> I think the RX-7 is gonna be the one to beat. That's gonna be a monster. I'm Dominic. I've built one of the most modified and powerful RX-7s in Australia. I've been building cars since I was 14. I mean, everybody always said to me, you know, why don't you become a mechanic? And, you know, why don't you fix cars? You know, you love cars that much. But, you know, the honest truth is I don't wanna fix cars. I don't wanna have, you know, Joe Blow bring his car in and say, well, it's making this noise and it's making that. I don't want to do that. I want to make them faster, better looking, handle better. And, you know, I want to build my own cars. I do, it, I do it for fun, I do it for a hobby, I do it for a passion. I don't want to do it to get paid for it. Otherwise, at the end of the day, you know, you come home from working on everyone else's cars and you don't want to work on yours. I'm Dimitri. I'm the big man. That's why I've got 427 cubes of Falcon GT. I've got a 1971 XY GT Falcon. Um, I'm a mechanic by trade. Well, my car's a nice car, but I've made it to the way I want it. There's a lot of other vehicles in the competition that are really, really good. I mean, from my aspect anyway, from like engine, body-wise and stuff, they're really nice cars. Mm -hmm. The Ferrari, who's not worried about the Ferrari? That's a Ferrari. I'm Muhammad. I've got a need for speed. And I'm the king of bling. Mate, all my own boss. I don't listen to no one except my mum. That's it. <laughs> Fucking old cars, mean market value six thousand dollars. What's wrong with them? They're all fake anyway. I'll show them how it's done, mate. They're, nah, you know what? They're the they're the best crew I've ever met. Fantastic sound. That twin turbocharged Ferrari. Look, I found one of them is a bit of a police informer, but we'll fix him up. Who's the police informer? Can't tell you that. You'll find out when he's got a black eye. <laughs> I'm Dave. Got a V8 Tirana, small car, big performance. Very narrow, lots of understeer. Oh, but he's on the power. Like... I'm a workshop foreman at the moment, and I also do motorsport modifications. The car's not life. It's, it's probably something I've built just to show people what I could do, like my trade background and that. It feels good to drive a car with a lot of power. Oh, yes, there's your move. Yeah, it's exciting. Oh, there's, there's, they're all potential winners. I love Tiranas and I'm just, yeah, I'm, it turned out exactly the way I wanted it and that's the way I like it, so. My name's Andrew. To me, performance and driving comes first. I live my life at full boost. My car's a nice...
98 Nissan 200SX. It's an S14, but it's got an S15 front on it. When I started building it, I kind of didn't really know exactly what I wanted the car to be in the long run. I didn't really want to make it good at one specific thing. So as I started doing it, it basically just turned into a really hardcore street car. Another one. It's got all the technology and all the equipment underneath to be able to compete in either, you know, motor car, no circuit racing, dyno comps, drag racing. It, it's it's not great at one particular thing, but I like to think the car's it's it's good at everything. I'm Jeremy. Brocky's a legend. That's why I drive a VL Brock. It's on for young and old. Come on, here we go. Got a VL Group A, Peter Brock Special, and I'm an electrician by trade. The car in the competition, what I've entered, um, no, it doesn't have a name, but a lot of people know it as a Brocky, um, and they're very rare. You, you don't see many of them around no more. Yeah, we've got uh, Jeremy sitting out there You do get a lot of looks. Um, see a lot of people's mouths say wow like you know look at that <laughs> what I think of the Ferrari um, beautiful car um, yeah gorgeous car but yeah we'll see how it goes on the track have you got the accelerator extensions for this car <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see if we'll see if you can drive it I will do my best in trying to win the competition um, and at the end of the day it's probably the best man will win. Over the next eight weeks we'll put these guys and their cars through some of the toughest tests. Why? Because we're looking for Australia's first king of cars. This is why we've chosen these contenders. The cars have to be road registered and more importantly road driven. Each was hand-picked to cover all genres of the modified car world. We've got the Australian V8 covered with the Brock Commodore, XU1 Tirana and GT Falcon. Yankee Muscle in the Corvette, a twin-turbo Ferrari for the exotic Euro market and a four-cylinder 200SX and rotary-powered RX-7 representing the import market. The results are guaranteed to polarise opinions in the modified car world. To judge the series, we've got two guys who really know their cars. Motivational expert, advanced driving instructor and racing car driver Ian Luff and editor-in-chief of Hot 4s and Fast 4s magazine, Nathan Luck, who will also be our challenge king. We've come up with a diverse range of exercises that provide an even playing field for all the competitors, while giving them the opportunity to extract the full potential of what these cars were built for. Every car will have its blue ribbon challenge, but it's the best all-rounder that will come out on top in the end. Together, they'll create courses and challenges to test the car's drivability, versatility, showmanship and expertise. Under a lot of pressure and under strict guidelines, each driver has the chance to prove, or not to prove, that they handle their cars. Red, orange, green, let's go! Brown, go! Come on! Oh, awesome! Come on! Go! Oh, yes! Breaking! Breaking! Oh! What have we done? We've won it! Now, while our drivers are sweating win a place in the challenges, our judges are only ever going to tell them who came first. The tally will be kept secret from the contestants until the final show, where we will crown Australia's first king of cars. This way, over the eight weeks, our contestants will be kept guessing as to who's in the lead. Even though this competition is all about winning challenges, it doesn't mean that a consistent high scorer won't win the trophy. The key is not to get disqualified, because that just gives you a big fat zero. After the break, the judges road test each of these super hot cars. You're watching Sweat and Gears. Mm -hmm.